Hey, what's going on, guys? Another episode of the Pokey Talk Podcast, I believe number 62. And we've got a special guest with us. We have Todd along with Philip. And uh, this is the crew that went with me to Kansas City Collect Con. And this episode is going to be all about the recap and uh, what we did, what we bought, pros and cons. So, what's going on, guys? Going on. What's up? And yes, like Nate said, I am special. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna talk about all the the ups and downs, all the inside jokes and the huck tools and the most <laughs> <laughs> everything. So you think? You think? So all right. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, so yeah, just kind of a free form episode just breaking down Kansas City figured we'd go through and just kind of tell you guys you know step by step what all we did and then we'll go through and you know talk about the details of each of those interactions but uh any news that we know of I guess not really much because we're kind of recording mean, shortly after the other one but yeah I mean there's like the special 151 Voltor promo which you're if you think those are cool if um, that, that was handed out to the staff who helped run the N- North American championships. Um, let's see. And Damn. apparently there's AI entries for the Pokemon illustrator, which I thought there were a couple that looked kind of suspect. And yet one of them is one of the ones I thought two of them actually, because the, the, the Porion, the, the, the death of the Orion makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the size. Just, I mean, they should have seen this become a problem, like, yeah. and it just also makes you wonder, like, what the selection process is there, too. <laughs> but, yeah, there's not much news happening, though, but uh, if we, I guess, start with the Collecticon, we can start with, I guess, the drive, so... We pretty much, you know, we don't go down there Friday. I know a lot of stuff happens Friday night, but that might be a thing in the future. That I know yeah. we've talked about it many times, but um, Todd actually came over to my place Friday night. We are only two hours away, um, slightly less maybe, and then we just headed out pretty early Saturday morning and got there before the show started. Um. But yeah, what'd you what'd you guys think of that arriving early Saturday to the show? So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first. Oh no, I was just gonna <laughs> say it was. Uh, I think between the last time and this time, we got there earlier, mm-hmm. so it was definitely a little different because you know there wasn't as many people there like when we first got there. Uh, but yeah, then you see people start like pouring in after ten o'clock. So yeah, like I said, it was definitely a little different than last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I notice now. We can kind of go into a little bit later. There was less people, but I noticed that for the VIP, which I assume was pretty, pretty much the same. I would assume as last year, there were t- moments. Well, one, there were tables that were still being set up because everybody was. <laughs> Tag it behind. Uh, Sunday morning especially, but Saturday morning as well. But the tables that were set up, it was just me and one other... Per- like, it was me and, and the vendor, essentially. Or somebody that was working there. And that was it. So, like, I had free range to be able to be like, can I see that? Can I see that? Can I see that? And I didn't have to worry about it, about her, like, or her or whoever was uh, at the front grabbing the cards and letting me see them. I didn't have to worry about her being flustered by all these people around me, and I didn't have to feel rushed with all these people around me. So it was really, really nice with the one-on-one time I could have with each vendor, even though it was very little time frame for it. Um, we had about 20 minutes or so, but with that, within that first hour, so we got we walked in about 9.40. By 10.40, I'd already spent over a grand. And right. if I if I were to able to, if we could have, if I could have walked in at like 9.05, I could have spent all my money within the first hour. I'm pretty confident in that. Which yeah, it says was, a lot of... Yeah. It, it was pretty nice. Yeah, like, I can't tell if it's because we got there early or 
like the VIP situation or just less people in general. But yeah, you definitely, you know, me and Todd kind of took advantage of the signature lines. So maybe it would have been better off like just going and hunting the singles. But I kind of was under the impression that I wanted to wait because I, I had stuff to sell. So I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in, uh, I, I think I mentioned it in some of the Collecticon videos I made. So if you've watched those before, you'll hear about it. But I actually bought a Lorcana first chapter booster case literally the night before. Because <laughs> the, the LGS in town had a 10% off discount and they were selling them at a pretty decent price. Um, 10% discount was for their one year anniversary that just happened to be the night before. So that was my main goal going in is like selling. And, you know, a lot of people want to wait until they get the first sale or two underway to buy things. So I wanted to kind of take my time. We went ahead and got some signatures out of the way. So next year, you know, hindsight probably go to the tables first and buy cash and like give them the cash that they're looking for and then try to sell stuff, you know, midday or in the evening on the first day. But I can't remember. Did we, I guess we got Erica signature and then did Erica, we get any others? No, I got Erica Schrader, but uh, I was going to touch on a topic when you were talking about the signatures. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Uh, like when we first got there and we was waiting in line, there was a lot of people in line for the VIP. And you talked about this, Nate, like while we were there, you're like, I think it would be better if we went to like the regular line because there was only like, there was nobody in the regular line. And then like at least 15 to 20 people in the VIP line. Yeah. I, and I don't know how they would do that. Like, if you see your badge and it'd be like your VIP, so well, then you could just take it off, but then you'd at yeah, least I have guess. to wait until 10. So the way to do it would be like, wait at the escalators at 10 o'clock. And as soon as you see the first wave of general admission coming up the escalators, like just V line, <laughs> V line yeah. to that. But I imagine they'll probably like that first wave of people, they would probably, you know, get, a lot of the VIPs out of the way first, probably 20 plus. So yeah. I don't know. It's hard it was, to, hard to say what to do, but it was just really weird the way that it was all working because like, I don't know how they do it. Is it like two VIP and then one general two VIP one general? Yeah. It's usually like two or three VIP one general. I know, which we'll talk about later too. When I went to, uh, Darth Maul. Yeah, Darth Maul's guy. I can't remember his name right now. He got his signature? <laughs> what a fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, when I was in his line, like there's a dude dressed up as Wolverine who was like kind of in the middle of the pack. And I was like 20 people back from the VIP line. And when I got up to the front to sign him, it still looked like that Wolverine dude was like right in the middle. Like just looked like they were not having a, a good time. But Ray Park there. I, I remember to yeah. Ray Park. I remember. He was uh <laughs> he was super nice, but uh yeah, it it looked pretty miserable in the normal line over there. So uh yeah, definitely VIP is worth it, no doubt. If you're yeah. just getting if you wanna just get literally the biggest name that they have there, if you just want that one signature, it's probably worth getting the VIP line because you're literally talking about like a 30 minute wait that I had to wait versus like two hours. And the line was relatively short when I got there. We even Shimo ended up being like last year. That was even more than that. And that was, there was nobody's line. I saw it came close to Shimmel. Yeah. That was his last year. So it's like, I mean, you didn't, the lines really weren't bad. But I saw, I didn't even go that way at all. Like I, whenever I walked in, I know you, you <clears throat> stopped to talk to Gary but I wanted to King Pokemon, so I, I wanted to just get in there. Like, I got 20 minutes. Come on, let's do it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't regret that. I, I do regret some, the first buy, which took the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but we'll go into that a little later. But, you know, I think going forward, this was the first year where we really had to focus on buying and really were able to get there early enough to be able to utilize any, any VIP. And I, 
was able to experience firsthand the incentives and the benefits you can have from having that VIP, especially if you're going there with the intention of making money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good overall, like getting there early. But yeah, I'd probably go do a quick scan next time because I just, yeah, I don't know why I was in the mindset of just kind of waiting until people had cash. But but yeah, like you said, we got there. Um, I guess it was like, when was it, 9.20? We got to the convention center or something like that. And, uh... Yeah, rolled in, VIP line, we just walked up and uh, got in there. There, Gary was down at the bottom of the escalators. We said hey to him, Philip went in, me and Todd talked to him for a little while. Um, I got that uh, far-fetched. Yeah, he, he was giving away some slabs for the kiddos, and Todd has a little kiddo that he wanted to get a card for, and got a little far-fetched. Gary signed that for us, and... Uh, yeah, then we went in. We went for Erica's signature. Philip got busy. And I feel like after I got Erica's signature, the only thing I was doing was trying to sell that first chapter booster case, which I did do around lunchtime. But other than that, I mean, we were... We got separated multiple times just because we went off doing our own thing. But, I mean, we were pretty much, you know, wheeling and dealing. Yeah, I All feel the way like up until the evening time. I feel like you selling that box though was pretty crucial at the beginning. I know you wasted a lot of time, but like you kind of had to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like have to have to. It's just like, well, I in my head I hadn't even like looked at the singles yet, so I'm like, I don't want to tie up the six hundred dollars the night before. You know, nothing. Like, I literally just got it to try to make a quick flip. But, yeah, it's it was good. Like, literally the first table that was, like, bordering the signature area, I uh, went and talked to who had Lorcana. They literally said, like, I'll give you 800 for it, and it's good all day. Like, come back. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was really nice. Like, literally the first person I talked to said, I'll buy it for 800 all day. So that was super nice. And then after I sold that, I pretty much just was looking for singles and stuff. But me and Todd were together quite a bit during that time. Um, who all did you go see, Philip? I guess, so, I guess so we can these, kind of talk about who all we saw the first day. So in these moments, a lot of times, um, like the last couple of years especially, like I've been kind of brain dead like from level from sleep deprivation and like so like my memory like how much i can remember after the fact is kind of tricky at times um but my mind was fluid enough to make some deals obviously (laughs) (laughs) i I was i I felt like a zombie but i was not a zombie mentally i was still able to take note on a lot um so i saw card rich Pokemart to uh, Pokemart collectibles, and those are honestly the only names I actually remember um, going to. I, I I did go to a few other places. That I don't remember him or their names. And even if I did remember the names, I wouldn't want to mention it because they had a lot of their cards, like a lot of their Crown Zenith 151. They had a lot of cards stuffed in a penny sleeve. And I was worried when I saw that. I didn't think anything of it, but I kept everything organized in the binder in the order in which I, I got them. So, and I had them all coincided with like the buys. I would enter each buy that I did as well. So I knew based on the buy, which binder, which area in the binder it looked at. So later on that day, I looked through them and all the, all, most of the rejects I had from the buys, I did very well with scouting out tens, but the areas where I miss were from that first buy because there were scratches, which they received from being jammed in the phase leave with 15 other cars. Um, what I would just suggest, don't even bother with, if they, if every single card like that is in a penny sleeve, is jammed in, I would just go on to it and never vendor. I mean, I, it was every single card. It was, it wasn't every single card. It was two thirds. Yeah. It was, it, it, it was two thirds. There, there was, there were quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll um, that. 
but anyways, I, I visited a few other places, just random. I literally was trying to hit as many places as I can. Any, any place that had a bunch of cards... Um, like in cases, and especially a bunch of like 151, which was everywhere. But like cards, I, I was after. I would stop and look. And again, going back to those kind of early, I had a lot of free time to be able to go th- through things. It wasn't until almost 11 when I got to a vendor where it was just like shoulder to shoulder. And I was like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. Like this is this is how it's gonna be. But like again, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of that. For the first hour, um, within by twelve o'clock, I think I had spent almost every cash I had. Yeah, it was like twelve one o'clock, and I could have spent it like I said within the first hour and a half if I wanted to. But I was trying to pace myself. Yeah, I I almost needed to go hard. Like, I mean, I I only spent like one sixth of the cash that I brought with me at the end of the show and like I was planning on going a lot harder but I was also very picky like and intentional I didn't want to just start buying and taking the chances like I just really practiced like staying to my roots and like okay I'm not just gonna buy a lot because I have a lot I'm just gonna take my time and just pick out you know so I was really methodical still even though I had like some more disposable income and I was glad I did because it felt good leaving with like a solid stack and then not overdoing it. Like I could, you know, basically make sure I still felt good with what I had because I took my time. But it it took a while for me to get a little comfortable, like especially, you know, I kept trying to fish around for $50 on that Lorcana box. It's like, well, I'm just one dude, you know, the first dude offered me 800 and I found a dude who offered me 850 and I was trying to get nine just to make the most of it. But I should have just taken the 850 on the spot like, and not I, worried I was, about it. <laughs> I was even telling you, I was like, dude, no, no one's going to buy that for 900 Like, just if it's going for a grand, just think of the margins that you would be selling on eBay. The only way you're going to make any money is if you sell it through PayPal. Or, I mean, through, like, Facebook or something. Well, a lot of the guys I was talking to, they, they sell it. Like, they, they'll they break out the case and sell okay. it by the box. Or they do, like, openings and streaming and they sell it by the packs, which is even better. So, but yeah, I just, I was carrying it around too long and I was like, all right, I'm done. And I just went back to the 850 guy and sold it to him. But while we were walking around, I didn't really see many people. I talked to collectible tags that day. They, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers in the space, they just started doing this like last year. So they've been going hard and got a bunch of followers on youtube and their their table looked good and they were buying collections and so they they jumped in and went big um so yeah it was good to see that like a boost of confidence like you know if you ever want to do this like they literally jumped in like last year probably timed the market pretty darn good being like pretty low last summer but uh yeah it's it's good to see that you can still kind of make something of it there is something that I want to say to that later, but I mean, as far as our day one at the show goes, that's pretty much it, right? We found somebody well, selling sixty dollar one fifty one Japanese boxes. You know, that was incredible. Yeah, so it was nice, just sixty bucks there on the spot. You got your box. So he didn't want us telling everybody, <laughs> but we bought multiple boxes and. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I bought that premium collection along with two Pokemon Center 151 English, uh, a regular 151 English, yeah, and a Brilliant pretty... Star ETBs. Yeah, those are pretty good pickups. So... I saw that Snorlax even raw. It's going for a decent amount. So you should try just the somewhere. Are you talking about just the regular Snorlax or the Pokemon Center Snorlax? The Pokemon Center promo, just yeah. Even you, well, you have you have those. Oh, those are the ones you yeah. gave me to grade. Yeah, yeah. The, you have those too. Okay. I have the rest. Like I said, and that's the reason why. Yeah, like in one of the videos, which is later on. I mean, we'll talk about why there's. <laughs> 
I don't two Snorlaxes and that I don't ETP. I think you gave me those to grade. So I don't think I have them. But double check your stuff. Because I think we looked at them and they were going to get nines. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you had them in your pile. But, I don't know. I'll have to double check. Yeah. I, Either I way, say though, I you will can sell those raw pretty. Like, you can sell those raw and probably get at least 20 to 40 bucks. Except that's promos kind of hard to get just with the Pokemon Center. Just might look into that. What were so, you going to say, Philip? I was going to say that, um, so we kind of, the day one was kind of split into two halves. We took a break about midway. I <laughs> met up with you guys shortly after you sold the Lorcana box and we left you. I just needed to chill in the hotel for a little bit. I kind of got reassessed with everything, dropped off a few things, kind of saw, saw the amount of money. <clears throat> then I brought back a bunch of slabs with me and then I sold everything. I, well, everything but two slabs, which I sold the following day. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't believe, like, I was able to actually sell everything, including the Ditto Pikachu. I was able to find a buyer for 300 which is pretty good considering it's not very fluid. I was able to find somebody that was willing to go with that, like, that offer. And, I mean, I went with it. I was like, I mean, he could probably make up to 500 on it, but I was like, only one sold in the last 90 days. It was like 420 plus international shipping so maybe 450 is what he could have sold it at too you know maybe 400 so i was like i mean i feel pretty good honestly 300 cash mm -hmm. considering i was trying to sell it for a whole month and i didn't get anything it was only a month but i mean at a certain point like i have that cash now to be able to use for grading yeah. so that end up actually coming in pretty clutch we ended up selling all the all that and then by about 450, 445, waiting for you to sell one of your gold stars, that about killed me. <laughs> like I was, I was completely done. Like I was so tired, yeah. I couldn't wait. To, I I couldn't wait to just like sit down. I was uh I was with you, Philip, on that second half. Like the yeah. first half, I was with Nate, and then mm -hmm. went back to the hotel, came back, and I stuck with you. <laughs> I was just like, man, I felt bad for leaving Philip. <laughs> I even told Nate that on the way up. I was just like, dang. Well, I mean, I was okay with it because, like, it was, like, the first couple hours I was focused. I I had a job to do, and I, I did it. Um, every year with these things, I kind of get o overwhelmed when I first get in there. And But I, I honestly, I don't know if you're going through those cards right now, Nathan, or if you saw some of the cards I, I end up including for the submission and I did very good with the evaluation of the cards on all factors. Um, there's a couple, maybe the centering I probably could have done a little better with. Um, but honestly, I did pretty good. Ended up getting five Charizards. Um, one was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did pretty I good on the Charizards. Like 20 Charizards. So. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I did pretty good with that. And, if I would have had more money, I could have bought more Charizards. And I think that was one of the best plays to make. Now, I don't think I should have spent a grand necessarily. But if I had like four to five grand to play with, yeah, I would have done that. Because if you get, so say you buy ten Charizards and eight of them become a, a ten. I mean, holy shit, that's some crazy margins right there. That, that pays for a good portion of your uh, budget just right there. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I would have, there's, there's a few people, there's a few cars like that that if I would have had more, I would have had it all spent in the first hour. I'm kind of curious to see how fast I can spend next year within the first hour. Like, the first hour, how many, how much money I can spend while also doing everything right. Yeah, I need to, uh, yeah, I, I spent some time that day selling some top loader cards that I brought mm -hmm. um, for our buddy Jordan and I had some too that I just wanted to get rid of. They were just extra fodder. Um, had the my first sale now that I remember was actually Umbreon V alt art in Japanese. So I think I sold that and a lot of other slabs that I had for like right around 170, 180, which basically, you know, got a little profit off of those cards for what I bought them for. And then I sold Jordan's other stack for like I think it was right at a hundred. Um, so 
Yeah, that was pretty good to get those done. But I'm trying to remember, I don't think I even had a buy until, I guess the Bulba store was really my only notable buy for day one when I got the Charizard EX from the art book. And I think I paid like 1300 for that, which is kind of like right at market. Um, so that was always on my grail list to have, but other than that, I'm trying to think. I tried to work a Rayquaza deal out with, uh, that guy who bought my Umbreon, but, you know, he, he wasn't my style of personality. I'll just say that. And, uh, it's kind of rubbing me like I could tell I was annoying him because I was like, well, I'll walk around. <laughs> it was like one of my very first like tables. So obviously I'm not going to take the first thing I see. And I basically, yeah, I was just trying to upgrade my card. I was in no rush. Like, it's not like I didn't have the card. And, yeah, uh, yeah I was kind of rubbing him the wrong way because I was being stingy. So in turn, like, he was rubbing me the wrong way. So I was like, I just need to, like, walk away from this guy. And I kept telling him, you know, I'm going to be here all day. I'll be here tomorrow, too. And he's like, well, let's make a deal right now. Like, I almost want to say, no, like, forget it. I'm just walking uh, around. No, no. He's like, I'm going to be walking around. I'm going to be looking at cards. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then why are you here? <laughs> yeah, and we ran into him, to him later, like, looking at cards. But it's like, well, yeah. I don't know. It was like, it was annoying he was there very much for business, Gosh. and which I understand most people are. It's like, but... Just be a little more sociable here, guy. I know it's early in the show. You're itching for that deal, but yeah, we'll we'll get back to him because I did actually get that Rayquaza in a different way. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, wrapping up day one, we went back to the hotel and chilled for a little bit. We had a reservation at Q39 for the barbecue. Yeah. What'd y'all yeah, think? Did. The uh, reservation, uh, I mean, it was pretty, it's it's easy to get a reservation. I mean, I got one a week ahead of time. And uh, whenever I got there, you dropped me off at, front, uh, at the front. I told them that we had a reservation. They had to wait until they cleared off the next table. And we were waiting outside for maybe, I want to say, like five minutes maybe. Yeah, it seems it seems like you don't need a reservation, but it's gonna cut your wait time down to five minutes from what looked to be like thirty plus. <laughs> yeah, because there no, was when I all was the inside, people sitting outside. About... There was like people with drinks who like went in and got a drink from the bar and came back out to wait. So I'm glad we got the reservation to get in there. Yeah, they said that the wait uh, wait time for the people in front of me was like forty five minutes to an hour. So it's something that you would see like at, I would assume maybe like Texas Roadhouse, if you know, yeah. that's about what the wait time is there. Yep, that's that's pretty nuts. If we had to like sit out there on that bench for forty five minutes, I probably would have been sleeping and sunburnt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was hot. Nobody wants to sit outside. Yeah. So besides, you know, the wait time and and everything like that. Uh, what you guys think of the food? Because I've been there once before, so it's totally your guys' time. So I mean, it's definitely yeah. the best I had in Kansas City for the three years we've gone. I think That's it's mine sure. too. Yeah, like Joe's. I know Phil wasn't a fan of Joe's, <laughs> but mm -mm. I've ate Joe's multiple times, and it's it's good. Just like it's kind of quick. The line. When we went the very first year it was there, it was out the door, and it still went pretty decently quick. But, yeah, this this was a little better. Q39 was a little better. Mm -hmm. um, jumping ahead a little bit, but when we talked to Nick Old School and Mr. Walrus, they, they weren't the best fans of it, it seemed like. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, but they, they also said they got the brisket, which is what they're known for. But I'll jump into that here in a minute after yeah. whatever you guys have to say. I, I got the brisket and it was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, go ahead and uh, tell the story about the brisket. Okay. The brisket, that's for sure. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. So oh, uh, the last time I went, I got the brisket. It was 
delicious, like over the top, best brisket I've ever had. I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go again. Like when we go this year, that's what I'll get. They have a uh, pick two or pick three. So like I got the pick two and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna get two sets of brisket this time because I just absolutely loved it. And it was like, it was dry as dirt. <laughs> dry as Sahara. <laughs> yes. Philip will it, it vouch. Needed a, needed a little the, hot too. The, the, <laughs> it needed need a lot of hooks too, is what it needed. Man, me, me and Philip looked over at Nate's plate and then. <laughs> I'm over there him, munching down. I'm like, man, pork. I did not get what you got. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you he know, yours like, looked. I was thinking, it looked. It looked like it was probably sitting there for a while. I'm gonna have to yeah. So it was like the tail end of it. Um, I was kind of disappointed, but the rest of the food was phenomenal. Yeah, you which guys, makes you me. Guys got the burn ends, right? Yeah, yeah the burns. The burns were, were pretty good. The burn ends were pretty good. The actual brisket was meh. The um, the fries were damn good, and so were, so were the wings. It was some fantastic wings. Uh, they they had the uh, what is it? The Mexican street corn. <laughs> That was just a puddle of butter, but it was it was it, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I got some I had, good butter over there. Indeed, yeah, I, I had that too, and it was really good. We also got the onion straws. No, that, that was pretty good. Those too. were good too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'd like to add. Nathan isn't a fan of onion rings, but the uh, the onion straws are so thin, and they're like really good. Fried, mm-hmm. you know, and the batter's really good. But Nathan said he was a fan of those. Yep, they were definitely pretty good. Yeah, everything was great for me. My brisket was definitely more tender and juicy, and like shredded apart with the fork. Juicy. Um, but yeah, it was. It was definitely good. Probably the best that I've had as well. Um, especially the wings. So there's a. Wing place here in Columbia, CJ Wings will call them out, but uh, <laughs> it's by far my favorite as far as wet wings go. And then there's Como Smoke and Fire, which well. is like, yeah, I haven't had D Rose, so I need to try those. But Como Smoke and Fire or D Rose is kind of the place you want to go for smoked wings. And I feel like, you know, for wet wings, I still like CJ's better just because it's the sauce that I like there at CJ's. I got the sweet heat barbecue, and that's where it's at. But Yeah, exactly. That's where me and Nate go every time I go to Columbia. I mean, if if we're not in the mood for it or if it's just me and him, like, that's where, we're, that's, that's where it's at. Well, yeah, and I feel like Q39, it was, like, definitely better than... Um, you know, Como Smoke and Fire or D Rose, and it may have been on par with CJ's. Like CJ's is like kind of crispy, like that, but I don't know. They're they're tied, in my opinion. Well, yeah. I mean, D Rose is pretty good, but maybe it, maybe D Rose is slightly more dry. And now, I mean, it's not to say that they aren't incredible. Probably the definitely the best smoked wings in my opinion in town. But, like, these are pretty juicy. I don't know what it was, but very, very crispy with the, with the smoke flavor with the juicy inside. I mean, it was it was yeah. pretty, yeah, pretty good. Like, like I, the best smoked wings for me, too. Yeah. Like, I was I was glad I we got those as an appetizer. So, well, Q39 also advertised that they are the best wings in the world yeah in the world <laughs> I, don't, I mean it's, it's gonna be subjective but like if they were i mean they can brag about it i'll, I'll say i'll say i'll say that yeah yeah the i i'd say they are definitely probably at least a nine out of ten yeah i wasn't that big of a fan of the fries they were good but i let them like sit over there for a long time because I was too busy munching on other stuff, but yeah. the so that's they, probably they, why. So I can't, I can't. Yeah, the brisket, my nice juicy brisket. That was really. Good. I just say that I I didn't have any of yours, but I will say, um, salt and smoke, um, in St. Louis, their briskets were pretty good. 
Yeah, I haven't been there, but that's something that I'll have to check out. Like, I got a pound to go one time from there, and my god, that would just melt in your mouth. Now, there's another place called pick a bone and that's in Fenton, and they have the biggest, juiciest pork steak. It's just absolutely, like, amazing. So, like, if there's ever an event that's down in St. Louis... And you guys end up coming down here. That's a place that we have to check out. Well, I want to say I definitely want to start coming to start going to a few more shows each year just for the revenue because it, we're getting to the point where I can actually potentially afford it here within the next year to be able to do that to make money, obviously. So, yeah, it's just that I don't know if they would ever have one in St. Louis. Yeah, who knows? Well, even like another like con. I know in yeah. St. Louis they have like an anime con. Mm hmm. And that's more of just, you know, dressing up and stuff like that. But they have, they have a lot of cool products. Me and another friend of me and Nate's, is, uh, we were potentially talking about going to it next year if they had it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. But, uh... Anyways, let's go back to the, uh, well, yeah, let's go back to the second, uh, well. Yeah, after the, uh. After we the ate at Q39, yeah, we went back. There was an after-party trade night slash thing um, taking place in the parlor over there. Um, a lot of people went to that. We drove by on our way back just to see if we'd want to go. And it looked like a nice place, but from what I heard, other people say it was like this little hipster lounge place. And there was a nice little seating area, but it just wasn't that big. Um so it yeah, so we <laughs> we were thinking about it. We went back and, you know, we brought down or we decided to open up some 151 in the hotel room um before we went down to the lobby cuz we decided, oh, we'll just go down to the lobby first and then if it's like absolutely dead, then maybe we'll consider the trade night or something. So we were just going to play it by ear. Um but yeah, we did record. I guess we don't really have to talk about too much because I, I recorded most of those openings in the hotel room and they are pretty funny. Um, so those will be up on my YouTube here. I have, I haven't even looked at the footage. It's going to take me some time, but I would assume like maybe one, two videos this week, maybe the rest of them next week, but I'm really going to try to pump them out. So yeah, I think we opened what three Japanese one fifty one boxes. I opened so, one. Todd the opened first one. Time. You one, Philip. I say I opened two and somehow got like the top two cards in the set. Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He did, <laughs> he did open up two because I ended up opening up one with you, Nate. And then after that, Philip opened one, but I opened up a ETB. Oh yeah, you started. Yeah, me and you opened one each, and then. Philip opened one. And then Philip opened me, another one ATV. while you were doing English, right? Yeah. Then I opened up another one, and then that's when I was just like, "Okay, I'm done." <laughs> but we, we, you'll see, you'll see that reaction. <laughs> you'll see that reaction after. Just yeah, English is rough. It pays off if you get the hit and then the grade. But I mean, just even going back to Philip like two years ago. You know, coming to the realization that just Japanese is more fun to open. I mean, these, we had a blast with 151. I get like not a lot of the cards were as crazy as others, but I mean, mm -hmm. you get the, not only are you getting like the iconic Pokemon and the awesome looking art rares, but you also have the Pokeball Master Ball Hunt. So that's always fun. Yeah, and, uh, that, that was definitely a lot better than the English in my opinion. Yeah, because you're you're still opening every pack unless you somehow get them in both in the same pack, which is I guess possible, right? Which would kind of suck, honestly. But if you don't, it makes it worth keeping just opening and opening, and it makes it fun because you know you you got something to look forward to with these guaranteed hits. Whereas with English, you can get bunk. Like yeah. I mean, everybody has a story of oh, I opened up an ETB and I got two hollows, or I I, I had a V card. Into Hallows, or I got like now it's like a character rare into Hallows. Yeah, and that's the thing with the booster boxes too, because even on English side, like you know, you can guarantee some type of pull, but with ETVs and stuff, like it could be really good or it could be really bad. 
like because you're not really guaranteed anything in those. It's just mm-hmm. random packs. So you could win. The ratio could be a lot better than a booster box or a lot worse. You never know. But, yeah, just seeing, like, the Japanese quality and the pull rates and the guaranteed rates, you know, it, it just felt more satisfying open up Japanese 151 than it did, like, the English, for sure. But, yeah, the pull rates on the English were, for for me especially, it was very, 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 very bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was very bad. I mean, if it's you fun do to get open. something, like, you know, yeah, it's but... hard to grade, and if you grade big, then it's a bigger win, but... Well, I, I just... But he, here's the thing. Try, trying to buy singles, especially a TCG player, like, you gotta see it if you're gonna try to make money just buying... Or getting money from from the set. So, essentially, it's like you gotta be close to a decent size sort of LGS to be able to just check in frequently on mint cards of, I don't know let's say Erica's Invitation or the Charizard, right? If that's how you're going to try to make money. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe get discounts that way if you kept going to the same place. But it's just a lot more difficult to be able to do that because by the time those singles get to you, it's already several weeks after the fact. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know know LGS is open to have singles in, in the store, but like any big hitters that are worth a damn, they're saying in to the graded. Yeah. But after that, we went to the lobby, and uh, we were just chilling in the lobby, opening more 151, and uh, we had a guy approach us by the name of Kevin, decided to Nebraska. random, <laughs> decided to randomly uh, just chill with us, and he's like, hey, you, you know, I got some beer up in the hotel, care if I bring him down, I got some packs too. He sat down, we ended up talking, and we were there opening packs with him. And he had a a nice, like, so this guy kind of like, you know, a little older than this. And he just, like, busts out this big binder of, like, nothing but hits, like character rares, alt arts, and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, turns out he doesn't grade anything. So this just turned into about an hour of, like, trading, <laughs> negotiating, pack battling, and just talking. Yeah, so that was, was a really cool time. Yeah, he was definitely one of the nicest guys I've met there. Just yeah, it was pretty Robert. funny, too. And then we also ran into another guy while we were sitting who also lived in the same area as me, which was really weird. Like, out of everywhere that guy could have been, we were on the second floor, and he decided to walk up and talk to talk to us you know which i thought was really weird yeah it was like we literally weren't in the lobby we were on the second floor like sub lobby kind of like we were in the lobby area but off to ourselves yeah this dude just walks up and starts talking to us and kevin offers him a beer and we get to talking some more and he's like literally right next to our hometown like me and todd and uh just the people he knew and yeah, like Todd said, just we were one group. There was one other group up there, and then their group came up. So literally probably 10, 12 people tops in this area. And of all people to approach us, this guy approached us. He knew our hometown. He knew a lot of people that we knew growing up with. He brings up, literally brings up the person's name out of thin air who I got my Mewtwo Gold Star from 10 plus years ago that's sitting in my case right beside me. And so <laughs> it was like, it was really weird. He's like, oh yeah, you know so and so? I'm like, that was literally the first big card I bought in my collection. It was 10 plus years ago and I bought it for $20. Like, why, yeah. would, why would you even bring up that name? <laughs> he, he also said that, oh, he's a weird character. <laughs> I was just like, I'm me really and Ace like, both yeah. like, yep. <laughs> So yeah, it was it was kind of weird. Like, have you been like stalking us and like following us around? Because <laughs> yeah, it was just weird for him to be in the same area, know the same people. Yeah, especially like my childhood best friend. Like yeah. that's how it. That's pretty much how it all started. Was 
him talking and he's like hey have you been to this card shop in this area i'm like oh yeah i know that place and he and then i asked him i'm like hey do you happen to know this guy and he's like oh yeah that's my best friend <laughs> i was just like are you serious i was like he was my childhood best friend I'm like we did pretty much everything together and that's how we started talking and then that's how him and nate started talking and then that's how that whole Mewtwo thing came along, which was, it was just all insane. How, like, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I'll, uh, I guess we can, uh, shout him out, shout out his store over there, but he's, uh, old Josh from the St. Louis area. And I was going to look up his, uh, Instagram here see what it was if I can remember right well, his name is uh, it doesn't matter about the last name because I know the last name well he followed me on Instagram too but I don't think he goes by his name on there but uh, yeah I'm not sure we'll, we'll find it a little bit later maybe but uh, yeah that pretty much transpired and, you know, we decided we were going to bring stuff up to the hotel room and then come back down. Um, and that turned into, I think, Philip, you stayed up there because you were pretty tired. Uh, me and Todd came back down. I brought my case with me, uh, met Kevin back down there. He said he was going to do the same, go up and come back down. So, well, I want to say before that, I... Oh, yeah. A few of the cards I was able to pick was pretty cool. I was able, so I mean, he just he do, he doesn't care about the potential grading value, as you mentioned. He just wanted really the raw mint value, you know? and there was cards that I didn't think would do well grading. And I traded with a bunch of stadium cards, which I have turned to be quite the collector apparently as I enter them into my b binder. <laughs> it's actually starting to look pretty cool with all of them together. And I bought a Charizard and Venusaur EX. Um, and what I wanted to ask him as well, like, I thought I was going to be able to stay up late enough or potentially see him the next day, but he mentioned he had a character rare binder, like a binder full of just character rares. And I would love to be able to contact him to look through those binders and buy specific cards, mm -hmm. mainly Smear Smeargle and like Vaporeon and, um, Flareon and Jolteon. And see if he would give a deal if I bought him all in bulk. But well, I, uh, he said he would be there next year, so hopefully we can contact him. Well, and... I don't want to. I don't want to like do it too fast. And maybe the end of week, maybe next week, maybe like hey. Oh, so um, so. yeah, because I'd like to be able to just go ahead and get them, especially the Smeargles. Yeah. Like the yeah. Smeargles, I, I bought at every vendor I could, just about as long as the copy looked looked decent and. Now I have a whole page of, soon to be two pages of s Smeargles. <laughs> well, uh, don't forget, uh, do you do you happen to have any, like, uh, trash cards, like, bulk of just randoms? Are you oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot he did the bulk stuff, too. Yeah, because he, he does that for Halloween. I'm pretty sure if you send something to him, like... I don't, ha I don't have a lot. I've been getting... I've been really downsizing a lot. Like I have a little bit of bulk, but maybe a thousand cards. Yeah, yeah, just anything like that. You know? I'm pretty sure he would appreciate that because he does. So Kevin does this thing in his subdivision. Uh, every Halloween, he'll give out cars to kids, which is like really super nice, of course. And like just anything, anything from super rares, art rares just all that jazz he just yeah, he says he, he puts like rares like hits on top so like they can just grab a a pile and see what they get and every year he makes like a god pack where like every card in the stack <laughs> is a hit yeah and he just is... like gets the kids reaction to opening that which is pretty awesome yeah and that's i i think that's why we kind of connected with that guy is because he just super old school really nice guy yeah, but down down in the lobby it was funny because I bought a, a 25th anniversary Charizard Hollow, um, 
Japanese, which is like my favorite Charizard. I bought it in a tin. And I was doing a coin flip. Like we couldn't decide and the guy had it a little high. Like market was like one six or market was like one eighty. And then I, I wanted to do like one seventy, but I ended up, you know, for the content doing a flip for one seventy to two twenty. And uh yeah, Kevin comes over. <laughs> this is when we've had a few <laughs> drinks. He's like, Oh, let's do a coin flip. I'll I'll pay the difference. Let's make it big. One fifty 250 and then like he was just there like you know haggling the deal more than i was so i was like dang i need to bring you with me tomorrow but, yeah uh, yeah it was funny was i did over. end up winning the coin flip so that was that was good but yeah the later, guy that you know oh i'm sorry Nate. i was gonna Go just on. say like later on he like i saw him you know i was sitting there talking to that guy because he had an arita art charizard that i was thinking about and I saw Kevin over there talking to another table who had high end stuff and he was doing coin flips over there, straight up gambling. He was like trying to find people with like ten dollar slabs and he's like, I'll give you twenty dollars or I get it for free. And he's just like just trying to find <laughs> anybody to do a coin flip. Deal. I would I would have taken that deal at, at the beginning of the day. Because yeah. of the well You're by like, the time I got over there and was like, Man, what are you doing? Like the guy he was doing it with was not very happy because Kevin was like, "Hey, all right, let's do another one. Let's do another one." And the guy was like, "No, man, you, you want to buy some stuff? Like, I don't want to do any more flips." Like you can tell, he was probably he probably had a bad sales day, and he was like, "Man, I can't believe this and this." Yeah, that that guy's name. It, uh, if anybody wants to look him up, his name is Poker Rich. Yeah, Poker Rich. He's... Who I got that from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's actually a really nice guy. Like, whenever I bought a couple cards from him that uh, that night too, like yeah. after drinking and stuff. This wasn't the like, guy Kevin was doing flips with, but this was the guy oh. I, I did the original flip with. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah, was off to the other table, but yeah, I went over uh, there and the uh, dude's uh, like, Walmart. "Hey, man, you want to buy some of these slabs? I don't want to do any more flips." And Kevin doesn't do slabs, so of course he doesn't. He didn't even care what the guy had. <laughs> yeah. And he even you, showed him a, like this whole briefcase of slabs that were just thrown in there. But Are you talking about uh, like the side that Omar was on? Like yeah. the guy with the perm? Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of over there. But yeah, they were cool too. Um, at the end of the show, day one, I did do that Rayquaza deal. But it wasn't with the guy I originally talked to that was annoyed with me. It was with his friend, and he tried to call him and everything, but you could tell, like, well, he hasn't been here all day, so I'm going to do some deals for him. So I am so I was kind of glad to, like, work with that guy instead. And he was there at that table that night, too. So it was cool to see him again. So you see the same people all over the place. But, uh, yeah, we ended up getting out of there. I don't even remember when we came back up to the room. Pretty late, like 2, probably. Yeah, it was... Well, no. Well, <clears throat> it don't matter. Yeah, it was about, like, yeah, it was about like two thirty. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, pretty late, and then we got off to bed and got up early for day two. Didn't go to bed until like three thirty four, just because we kept talking about the old hawk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stupid jokes and just sitting there. <laughs> You're just freaking laughing the entire time. Like I'm pretty sure we were laughing for a full straight hour and a half <laughs> until Philip just like <laughs> Philip like I fucking hate you guys and it just went straight to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that was funny, but I guess uh, going into day two, we still try to get over there early, and I mean we're kind of going long on time. So I mean just to quickly recap my day. I ended up getting Darth Maul signature and I bought a couple more singles and then we did this like $20 thing where you could pay 20 bucks and like you opened up um, 151 packs until you got an art rare better. Mm. So did that, bought a couple more boxes and then other than that it was mostly just singles. I bought a couple more singles, a couple Charizards and Arceus, gold Arceus V stars and stuff like that. And uh, yep. And then that was it. We left and hit up a gas station and came home. But what did you guys end up doing day two? 
when I was looking for singles, you guys kind of broke off and, uh, yeah, I would say I ended up spending, I had a, a very small budget and there was some excess bulk I had to see if I could still get rid of. And I ended up finding two EVs from Cartridge pretty early on. And I ended up taking two of them. One I ended up getting signed by Schrader, Eric Schrader. The other one I ended up selling. I was like, uh, I was thinking about it. I was like, if I take a loss now, because I looked at it and I was like, it was between two of them. And after looking at it again, I was like, damn it, I should have chose the other one. <laughs> and like the centering, there was centering and one other thing on on the EV. I was like, I'm just going to sell it. And and then you end up. I showed you where it was at. I was already done spending money, and I was like, Nathan, I'm pretty sure there's a third in there. There's there's one in there that probably could be a ten. I was and like, one I'm, let's go find it. it <laughs> it was, it was the one, and then you, you, I mean, you would you agree? I mean, you pulled it, <laughs> so you think it's it's got a good shot, and that was one of the ones that, that was the one I, did, I didn't take, and again, I was sleep deprived. I I wasn't thinking it mentally straight as well, um, which is why I really I will if I have to to help it, like I'll do whatever it takes to stay Friday night because. I, if I'm talking about bringing in five thousand dollars next year, I don't want to be sleep deprived. Yeah, be like all I, because I, I mean, I think it influenced also that first buy, which ended up having a lot of bad ones because my eyes weren't sharp yet. Um, mm -hmm. so, but yeah. Better uh, luck next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For me, it was mostly just uh, selling the first day. Uh, I had brought my brother's cards with me, was able to get $90, $90 out of it, which was okay. Was no big cards. Uh, definitely $90 worth. Uh, but part of that second day was mostly just buying singles and, uh, you know, just really trying to make the money back. Yeah. Uh, trying to get those PSA 10s. <laughs> There was uh, one EV that I bought that I should have looked at closer, uh, but it had like a nick down at the very bottom center of the card, which I should have saw. Yeah, and it's hard to just, see, like, you know, you don't want to take up too much of their time. Like, there was one table, I think Pokey Rich. Or card rich, whatever it was. There's pokey rich and card rich, and something else rich, I think. But I felt bad. Everything's money, money, money. <laughs> Every I felt bad that he had like I don't know. They had like what fifteen Charizard EXs, and I looked at them all. Can I see them yeah. all? And I'm like, well, I'm I'm probably not gonna, you know, just say all right, thanks, and not buy one. So it's like I was gonna buy one for the PC either way. But I did find one that was probably PSA ten quality, maybe two, but I bought one and some other cards. So. Yeah. At that point, like, like I'm a very impatient person. So just like sitting there watching, I was just like, oh man. <laughs> But I, I couldn't imagine how the other person felt <laughs> type thing. Yeah, like, I think they're kind of used to it, but that's another reason. Like, I try to find where only, there's only a handful of cards, like where I'm only looking at maybe three or four, and I'm looking as fast as possible. I'm like, the easiest thing to do is basically, one, quickly see the centering front back. The other thing is take it out, hit it, light on all four sides, top left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right, and then kind of gleam it into light. Like, you, you can do all those within a span of, a, of five or so seconds, yeah. and you can still miss some scratches, but you can, if you hit the right light, if you know how to hit it with, like, the car, you can get a lot of different angles pretty quick yeah. and see if it's worth potentially. It's at least going to have a shot at a 10 at that point. Um, but I think there's one, it wasn't as crowded this year. And because of that, there weren't as many lines necessarily. So I think you were able to get away with it this year, but next year, if they get some big names, which I assume they probably will to try to recover from this year. Well, 
the lines aren't going to be the same, one. Two, it's going to reiterate the fact that you want to be there Friday morning early to really get that first hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it's it's okay to do that. It's just you got to be realistic with – because I did, like, I also did that with several vendors for 15 minutes, right? But I was, like, the only one there. Yeah. But uh, you guys, but you might be start wearing down on the vendors, and you kind of might be ruining some good faith, essentially. Trying, uh-huh. If you're trying to ask for a deal or not, but still. Another thing I saw uh, whenever Nathan and uh, Philip were doing their wheels and deals, and I was out doing my own thing, I, uh, like, kind of looked at my surroundings and just kind of looked at all the people who were dealing as well. And I surprisingly seen a lot of older people, like probably in their sixties plus. Yeah. And they were actually dealing too as well. And I thought to myself, I'm like, man, that's actually kind of cool. Like I could stop by one table and the, uh, this, uh, I would say a power couple in their 70s plus was doing some well, like wheeling and dealing some, too some which was the hobby. dude like I was just thinking to myself man like they got their sh- <laughs> they got their stuff <laughs> together yeah it was pretty cool to see like I, I you never see stuff like that see that's gonna oh, be me I just imagine yeah. myself like having like at that point, so much income where I just go and like, okay, I want to, I want to build an art set and like just buy a binder, go in and just buy every card I see to fill that binder. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm going to go in and buy out all the alt arts. All right. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> just like. Or you know, buy out certain alt fun. arts even. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, I mean, eventually I'm hoping some of these places, if, if you guys have re- recognize who we are um and i feel like it's pretty good deal because it's pretty great because one that's how you potentially get one a higher trade percentage potentially or be able to get a larger discount if you ask for a price because mm-hmm. they're more willing to do that because they know you're a repeat customer and you'll keep on coming back to them every single year like that's the point i'm trying to make with some of these places that i've gotten good stuff from now certain ones big ones like like card rich they're not gonna know you know I think there's only two or three people that were there last year from them. But some of these people that are like mid-size, those are the ones that are going to be like, oh, hey, what's up? Or even smaller size that come in every year. They're like, hey, what's going on? And I really like going back to those people every time I see them. Like the one guy that ended up selling two of my slabs that I forgot with me and some bulk. And we always chit chat a little bit because he was originally was trying to sell some Japanese um, vending sets in the first year. And I didn't have had the funds at the time to buy all three, and I never contacted him again. But we we've seen him every single year. And then another thing I I forgot to mention is on day two, I got Erica Schrader to sign one of my Eevees from Twilight Masquerade, and she had a black marker and a red marker. But here's the thing: the red marker didn't look thick and juicy, so I'm wondering if that's going to get a nine. But I said, screw it. I'm going to send it in anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might as well. And I'm going to think I'm going to actually get it graded. Because I think it's got a shot out of 10. And I'm going to get the uh, auto graded. and yeah. Or may- maybe I might just get the auto certified. We'll see. I'll, let, I'll see what you think about that one. But I mean... The off chance it gets like a ten nine or a nine nine in terms of grades, there's gonna be some value there. Yeah, and like I'll check out the card condition, but as far as the signature goes, like I haven't done enough signature grading to even know yeah. like how much Well you can probably find I some assume, online and see some yeah. examples. Well, I think will that knock it off enough to get like a seven or something? I mean do you really how do you knock off a signature that much for something like that? I don't know. I'll have to take a look and be like, do I want it certified? Do I want it graded? I would definitely want it graded, but do I want the auto graded? You know, that's what I'm trying to figure it out. Definitely certified for sure. Yeah, at minimum. The, the T in Taylor on my Veronica Taylor card has some, you know, it's not nice and thick, but it got a nine. 
and it's really only just the tea. Well, I think that is the thing with with her signature. It was only um, the what, what was it? I forget which name it was. It was the C in Erica, I think. Yeah, that was the only one. So it might be worth it. The off chance I get a ten nine or even a nine nine. Like I said, there's value there, and I can make a little bit of extra money on it. But if it's like a nine eight or a ten eight. That's like, yeah, <laughs> nobody's going to want that. Yeah, I just sent you a picture of the tea that you can check out later, but that one got yeah. a nine. I actually cracked that out of the case tonight just to put what it in my binder? memory signature binder. So. Yeah. Dude, that binder, the, like, me walking with you through Collecticon pretty much 90% of the time and just seeing all the compliments you've gotten on that binder – and like every top streamer, they're like, oh man, I wish I would have thought of that. It just, like, yeah. honestly, really made me happy. <laughs> I was just like, man. Yeah. Like, Which a lot of them are online. Like, I did the E4 signature exchange, but I've mm-hmm. been starting, I've been doing this since before that. And, uh, yeah, I have some signatures from last year, this year, E4 signature exchange in there, plus some. Guys, I've just dealt with online, like Dan from Catch 'em All Collectibles. Well, and, even some randoms you've gotten Kevin's too as well. Yeah. As well, yeah. It's not about getting like the famous guys. I don't even get like on purpose the famous guys. Like I, I just want the guys I talk to or have a memory with. And like some of them are kind of like that. Like the Bulba Store. Like I did buy a big card from him, but. I don't have memories with him, but I have memories of the hobby because I watch like all his stuff. So that one is kind of like, I just want your signature. Um, Give it to me now. (laughs) But yeah, I always at least make like, try to talk to the person. Like I don't want it just to get it. I want to at least talk to the person and, you know, realize they're actually like a cool dude and doing good for the hobby. Yeah. Which pokey any, came out with a video talking about how chill all our streamers are. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Pokey so. Any, for instance, like I've talked to him all three years I've went and I just this year got a signature. <laughs> like, yeah. So, and yeah, I got Kevin cause he was pretty cool and I just want interactions like that, you know, cemented in the, that binder. But I guess we should, probably wrap up pretty soon so like if you got any tips or like strategies or any other things that you guys had um, yeah go ahead and throw them in there now yeah so and we can I've talk about this it... again too in another episode like strategy specifically yeah no absolutely um i just wanted to have a few points i don't want to go to like deep strategy we could always talk, talk about that later um but the most impo- obviously ones i mentioned where Definitely want to get there early. Um, avoid the vendors also that have graded and raw. If they're smaller vendors or kind of a YouTuber or something, there's a chance that if they've got graded cards next to raw and it's some good stuff like all tarts and it's not graded, it's probably not a 10. Don't waste your time. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's going to be every single situation, but if you see graded, and they're kind of like in one case and then got a nice little case of here of raw cards. I mean, I would just keep on walking yeah. <laughs> to be completely honest with you. Like, I don't, I don't know if like you might have a chance, but I think if you're trying to optimize time, come back this, and then see if it's worth it. You're better yeah. off also finding some of the bigger ones that open their own packs. Now this could also be indicative of crap quality of English, but that would help. Or somebody that is well organized with their cards as well, and they have a brick and mortar store. Yeah, now, the brick and mortar store usually means they'll have, they'll be opening packs, but you know there's a lot of different variations. Like for example, Card Rich, they had a lot of cards, but only a handful of them were decent quality because they've also well, they opened a lot of leather own packs. They've also are a big table, so they're getting a lot of trades. So because it's so big, it's kind of hit or miss. But that goes back to where if you get there early enough, you can kind of pinpoint which ones are prioritized or even know which ones you know uh, uh, where they're at 
before you even go. So it's like, I need to go to these few spots r- r- right here real fast. And then just hurry up and go through as much as you can to spend, spend more, to spend the money that you're wanting to spend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Uh, my tips from a buyer uh, selling point of view is like if you're buying, make sure you take your time. I know there's a lot of people behind you or people want yeah. to look, but you're if, like if you're seriously looking to buy, make sure you look at all the angles, make sure you look at the card thoroughly and don't impulse buy. That was my biggest thing is uh, I came into Collecticon with a $500 budget and I went $200 over. So like that was my biggest thing. And that's one of the things I regret the most because I wasn't sticking to the budget. I was just overspending, not negotiating. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and you know, just read the area too, like... You know, don't look at 15 Charizard EXs if you're not going to buy one. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, you can if you're really stingy and you're really tight. And, like, if you don't grade a 10, like, it's not worth you buying. But, you know, even if I wasn't going to find one, I was going to buy cards from this place because I looked at so many and I didn't want to waste their time. Yeah. Yeah. Just even if they were cheaper expensive yeah. uh, there was a couple things like there was a specific card I was wanting to look at and I've looked through all the vendors and, but I've only found like two maybe three tops <clears throat> and I impulse buy because there just isn't that many cards out of that card right now so i was just kind of like uh you know what this might have a chance but i'll do it anyways mm-hmm. and sure enough there was a imperfection in one of them and i was just like oh man i wish i would have bought that now <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta if you the more you are in a rush or the more you're looking at and trying to speed up the more you'll miss and that's why I tried, like, when I was doing it, I tried to only stick with five or less cards and just really took my time on them. Yeah. But, yeah, I know you can't always do that. But Well, and you just kind of have to have a little bit of self-confidence and just know that this is also what they're here for. You're not the only one that's going to be asking to check certain cards. Now, you might be one of the few that's actually buying their specific grade and make money. And that's your whole intention or a good portion of your intention. Nobody really called me out on it besides one person. And I was like, when they did, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, what did they say again? Uh, it was actually, I ended up buying a Charizard. A Charizard that might be the cleanest looking one that I bought. Um, and I actually prefer, forgot to tell this story. But it was like towards the end of day one. It was like 30 minutes before the end of day one. Before I met, met, met up with you guys. Before you sold your gold star, uh, Rayquaza. And this girl just, like, was at a vendor, and, like, I forget what. She somehow grabbed my attention, and, like, I came over, and I was like, oh, I'll see what. what and I noticed she had Charizards, and I was like, I'll see this one. And she only just pulled pull, pulled out the top one, and I was like, eh, I think I'll pass. And he was like, why? I was like, well, I wasn't expecting you to actually say why. Um, but And I started walking away, and anyways... I was like, well, the, the corners are kind of dented. She's like, oh, you want one with clean corners? And I was like, yeah. And the next one she pulled out, clean corners, perfect centering, clean back. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take this. And they were asking for like 125 And they were like, what would you do? 110 for it. And then she called whoever's table it was into like 115 I was like, No. <laughs> <laughs> one chin no. and I, they asked if I can cash I was like yes because I know what what the I know what TCG player says it's 115 okay and you don't have to pay a 10% or 12% fee on it for, for this card or worry about them saying it back so I was like 110 <laughs> and I stuck with it and they actually budged and I was I was pretty happy no 
But yeah, that but was, anyways, that don't was, don't worry cool. about people criticizing or whatever. It's like you're spending your money that you've earned, that you've made, whatever. They're trying to get your money. They need to have that customer service aspect. I know a lot of these people don't have it necessarily, but they they are serving a cu- customer service job. And I understand it's a lot more non formal, and that's fine. But like ultimately, as long as you're respectful, which I was the entire time pleasant which i was the entire time like i was like respectful like oh thanks sir or you know thank you you know i appreciate you uh you all have a great day you know all the pleasantries is where they make it hard to say no to you yeah Mm -hmm. especially like on the second day because you know those vendors are trying to get rid of cards because a Mm -hmm. lot of people sell on the first day yeah and a lot of them flying back they don't want much so Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't realize how many were flying and that and that's another thing too the person that had all the scratches that were had like 15 cards in a penny sleeve that they flew in. So I never thought about the aspect, oh, they're trying to consolidate on space. So they just threw everything and money because they're flying in. So they just went ahead and threw everything in penny sleeves. And they, they were all like that. So you won't know who that is. But if you can start talking to the vendor, which is important. Like I was very sociable. I was half pregnant, but I was sociable because I work in sales. And I know how it is. You got to get people to talk, and you get people to talk, and they start they start revealing more information about their their company, whatever. And sure enough, it's like, oh yeah, we flew in. And I was like, oh, you guys flew in. Like they just start saying all these things, and then like, oh, we actually have ten more of, the, of this copy. I was like, oh really? You got ten more of this card? I would like to see them. You know, like so. being respectful, <laughs> sociable, coming come into handy with who you're talking with with, with these vendors, because ultimately. This is a customer service business transaction. Yeah, but if uh, another thing too, if you're just looking to get binder cards, I mean, of course you don't have to look at the quality, so that doesn't no. really matter. But like, yeah, if you're looking through it as a buy flip sort of view, kind of have to do what Philip said. Just kind of look over, be respectful, just kind of talk to him. Yeah. You know, they'll send you the right direction <laughs> well and buying in bulk from one vendor as well yeah, yeah because that they start giving you priority this the, with every vendor i dropped a few hundred on i noticed how quickly they were making me the priority like they were not even when there's other people they weren't helping those other people because i was a serious buyer about to drop several hundred dollars and yeah. they knew that so i i took <laughs> priority and then whenever you do that, you ask for that for that uh, them coming down ten percent. They're gonna say yeah, most likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my biggest buys was a Giratina V alt art, oh, which yeah. you mm-hmm. know, which that last place that I looked at all those Charizards, they must have had a pretty good copy. I didn't even look at it, but they had it priced at six hundred bucks. And this guy had it priced at three twenty five, which is lower than the PSA nine. So with that card, I could grade a nine and still make a little money, which was good. So it was good that that was priced the way it was. So I was like, all right, I need to look at all this guy's stuff that looks good. He didn't have much, literally like twenty, probably yeah, right at twenty loose cards, and he was like on a corner of like his friend's table, I think. So I think he was just helping his friend and he just like threw up some of his, you know, raw cards. And uh, I actually found like an RCS V star there and then a Roaring Moon EX and uh, bundled them all together for like 370, which was even if I bought the Giratina at 370, which it's probably coming down slightly, but I think it's still less than what a PSA 9 goes for. So it was really... You know, it, to my advantage there that they were priced good, but then I also went farther and like even, you know, bought some more things because the stuff was minty. So it's like if I see that price and it's minty, I might as well like really look at everything because it can only get better the more cards you add. So, yep, take advantage of anything you can. But, um, yeah, maybe we should wrap it up there. Maybe our next episode should be like tips for cons or something like that and kind of go into more detail. Um, by then, I'll have all the PSA lists together and we'll know exactly what we're sending. I'm working on that right now as we speak. 
But uh, any last remarks that you guys want to throw in there? Hut <laughs> Yeah. I guess. That's gotta be one of them. That's gotta be one of the closing remarks. Opening and closing. You think? You think? <laughs> the attendance, though, I do want to like touch on the attendance. Oh yes, like, yes, yes. Which we can do that next episode. I just want to. Maybe that's like the future of Collecticon's episode. Or well, something. I don't think they're all like that. I mean, we were talking about leading up to it. The it was top heavy with the, with the celebrities. You had like. Ray Park, Darth Maul, then you had Chuck Norris. Well, when Chuck Norris canceled, all of a sudden it was no longer top heavy. And it was, it became mediocre to me. Yeah. And if you look at a lot of the other collected cons, they got like Veronica Taylor, Sean Schimmel, Christopher Shabbat, and they actually had Chuck Norris show up. You know, it's, and th- th- there was even more. You know, like we didn't get hardly anybody. And, and maybe the it reason showed. it was so crazy last year is because Sean Schimmel, like there's, I would, there was a lot of Dragon Ball Z fans that were there. A lot of Dragon Ball people. A lot of, I wonder if, because Schimmel didn't show up, if there was certain people that dealt, they, they didn't bring out their Dragon Ball cards. Cause I saw very few vendors with Dragon Ball Super TCG. Yeah. No high end. Like we saw the first year. I did see like a lot of, uh, couple i wouldn't say a lot just a couple like anime voice actors who are pretty much heavy in all dubbed anime but i mean that's that's just for me like you guys you you don't really watch like low-end anime like i do what do you consider low-end not really low end. I mean, Sword Art Online is pretty big in some places, yeah. but I mean, you guys, I don't think you guys have watched that anime. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So, I've watched it. No, okay. I've watched. I've watched quite a bit. No, I haven't watched the whole series, but I've watched the first three seasons. I think. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I've watched every single one, and yeah. then uh, as far as like uh, Anahana, there was uh, the voice actor of. Uh, Gene Tom that was there and he was like one of my favorite voice actors because I absolutely love that anime. Yeah. Uh well yeah, the, oh yeah, the other guy, the, the voice of uh, Spike also from Kawabila, he also canceled yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if that was coincidence or like were they seeing that did they have privy to the numbers compared to last year? Is that what they were seeing? Like I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Like, look, this is how many people showed up last year, this is how many people we expect. And I wonder if they saw the numbers were bad. They're like, yeah, this isn't worth my time. Yeah. yeah I don't I don't know. Know. They sold out the VIP passes and stuff. So, Well, the people are going to – I think the VIP passes are going to do well year in, year out because there's enough people within a four-hour drive of Kansas City that are going that are going to want to come up there and utilize that VIP pass. Yeah. That's pretty much the way we were, too. I mean, we pretty much took advantage of it. Yeah. Like, they probably only have – I don't know how many VIP passes they have, but under, what do you think, five hundred, if that? Probably somewhere less than that, but so yeah, I have mean, no idea. well, the thing was, whenever we first went there, there was I, I wouldn't say there was five hundred people in line the second day, but we we haven't went there the second day waiting in line, so yeah, I I really couldn't guess that. I would say some somewhere probably around like three. Like you said, three to maybe five hundred. Yeah, I have no idea what the numbers and estimates, but maybe they just spaced out the convention more too. Like I didn't even go all so. the way over to the stage. Like I didn't even see any vendors pass like that Lorcana vendor. So I wish I would have walked over there. But I, I walked over there, and that's where I found that other Eviet. Yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't. Ass to ass this year, well, like it was last year, with how many people there were. Yeah, it was like, yeah, I felt like you did have to wait. Like there was people actively looking at cards at every booth, and this year, I mean, there was some that were like totally empty. You could just walk up, look, and walk away if you needed. Well, that's that's kind of scary going forward, but we can t- talk about that in the future. Yeah, just with the amount of shows now, like, 
there's multiple different shows happening on the same weekends. And even if you just count Collecticons, that's every month. So unless you're like doing this quite seriously, it's hard to keep up with the inventory. Or if you have the inventory, hard to keep up with the quality of inventory to like make something work. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up there. But uh thanks for joining us, Todd. Not sure what the yeah, next episode will be, but we'll yeah. let you all know. And uh if you haven't been to Glettcon, it's worth it to go. I don't know if it's worth vending depending on what you got, but uh I don't yeah. understand why some of these small vendors don't just go and walk the show. Like they have more luck. Yeah. The well, cost I mean, the cost guess, of space is just to rent a table unless you're using it unless you're splitting it with a friend. The only benefit just, like, is like a, is the, just getting the stuff. Like if you're buying, you know, just walk the floor, but like you know, they do get a lot of people bringing stuff to them and they can offer 70% and that's the norm. You yeah. Know? So that's the biggest thing is getting inventory for cheap. But, There's uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about before we got off was... Uh, make it quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, the difference between buying modern and old school. Like, mm -hmm. old school this year has been, like, super hard to sell compared to modern. Which you can even find it. Yeah, yeah. But like modern this year was a lot easier to sell for vendors than old school. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that we talked to that were like, man, it's been rough. I haven't been getting many sales. They, a lot of them had high end old school stuff. A lot of them had gold stars and stuff. So it's like, you know, the guys buying that stuff now are the ones that you meet. Friday night before the show, Saturday night at the trade night, the high end guys. Like, why not just go to a show and like bring those with you, you know, as a spectator? Because, like, yeah, the average person going to these shows is definitely after the modern right now, and there isn't a whole lot of modern that's like crazy. Yeah, I agree with Except that. For the alt arts and stuff, but coming from my point of view, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, just a lot of people. Just can't collect the old school like they want to. Every once in a while, you'll see it heat up. There was a lot of activity with gold stars. There was more gold stars at this show than I've seen two years past. And the dude I got the Rayquaza 7 for was just, he just done another gold star deal right before he talked to me. And they were talking about how hot they were. Like of all the old school stuff, gold stars were what people were wanting. But it's just not a whole lot of people wanting those. But anyway, that'll be it. We'll wrap this up and uh, leave it at that. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Peace out. See y'all later. See ya.